Okay, Bartuk, uh, you're you're up next. Uh, we have about three minutes, um, so people will will start uh, joining. We're on a delay. If you if you're watching it um, using the app, uh, I think the broadcast is about fifteen seconds um, afterwards. Uh, that means that um, when I'm talking something, after fifteen minutes, you will hear it. Fif uh, fifteen seconds. Sorry. Fifteen seconds. So I hear you, you and I hear each other in real time, but when it goes to the to the room that the mm -hmm. audience is, there's a fifteen minute, fifteen seconds delay. Okay, okay, um, good. So I will um, add your slides again. <laughs> okay. Um, and in in about three minutes. Uh, I'll introduce you and we'll be off and running. Okay, thanks. Have you have you been watching some of the other sessions this week? Uh, yes, yesterday I observed several. Um, but you know, <laughs> afternoon I had my usual activities <laughs> and I needed to uh, not to leave the meeting. But uh, yesterday I was looking for something what is interesting for me and yes. Yeah. Yeah, the same as you, I've been in and out, but um, the, the things that I've seen have uh, have all been really, really good. Have you been presenting now, or you are today? You have... uh, it was yesterday. I presented yesterday ah, at um, ah, yes. 1 p.m. my time. So sorry, I didn't. I didn't watch. Oh, no problem. No problem. There, it's a. It's a. It'll all be online. I think in a, in about one month. So it's. So if you miss anything, you can always circle back. Oh, that's great. So we'll we'll start. Um, I'm going to start at uh, seven thirty-one. <laughs> we'll give people one one extra minute to to join the room. Okay. So my time is one p.m. thirty. Uh, yep. That that makes sense. Okay, I think we're going to begin now. Um, welcome to the second session in Puerto Iguazu. Um, I'd like to introduce Bartek Burkot. Um, he's gonna talk about uh, dynamic content on the fly. Um, Bartek is currently an engineer at uh, Motorola Solution Systems in Poland. Uh, He's a graduate of the University of Science and Technology from Krakow University. Uh, he's been working in GIS software development since 2005, has also been doing GIS consultancy. Um, and as we all are, uh, he's an open source enthusiast um, and has always worked at companies and projects that are supported by the Phosphor G or open source GIS ecosystem. 
Um, his hobbies include uh, buses and trams and live location in, uh, in two of the large Polish cities, Krakow and Warsaw. Um, and this is his uh, second uh, trip to Phosphorgy. He uh, was in Bonn in 2016. And uh, please welcome him in giving his first uh, Phosphorgy presentation. Thank you, Michael. So hello, everyone. So my name is Bartomiej Burkot. And today I'm going to show you the topic about how to create dynamic content of the map in the web mapping service. In today's agenda, I will explain how we in usual way create a maps uh, using the static data sources. Then I will explain what does mean to create a map in the dynamic way. And then I will show a simple implementation of the dynamic map using uh, SQL query layer. Uh, after that, I will show you how to uh, create dynamic layers using dynamic maps using uh, map server map script library. In the end, there will be time for questions and answers. Uh, okay, so in my presentation, uh, I will talk about developing a client server web mapping system. Uh, it means we have a client which will ask a map and the server which will create a map and respond to the client. Um, this is um, in the static, op static option of this uh, client server architecture, we have a server where we access its resources. The server has data files, has databases, and the data which will be inside the map are existing in time when we are asking for the map. So like usual WMS, we are asking about the map and the map is existing on the server and the responsibility for the server is to create, re render a map and to, to, to cut a piece of the data from the data, render a map and deliver to the client. Like usual WMS server. Uh, unlike dynamic data, which does not exist in the time when the server wants to produce a map, sometimes we have a more sophisticated uh, requirement. Sometimes we need to create a maps which content does not exist at all. We need to calculate somehow the content. We need to make the content dependent from some factors, from some variables, some other conditions. We need, for example, calculate something and then put in the, uh, and then return the map to the client. Uh, here I will show you a simple examples. For example, the usual situation, we are, we are looking for the fastest, fastest road between two points. Uh, the map, the route does not exist, does not exist in time when we are asking about the map. The second example uh, is, uh, for example, current weather forecast. If we have in the in the field a sensors which detects the, the conditions of the weather and we need to see the current situation in the field, we are accessing in the runtime of our of producing a map, accessing the sensors in the field, taking the data, preparing a map, and then returning to client. The next interesting topic is flood map. If we make such map dependent on, for example, water height of the water in the rivers, then we can pass a, a, a custom parameter to such service. We can calculate the map, which regions will be under the water, and we will send such map back to the client. Next last example is, for example, we are passing to such service uh, point in the field and we are calculating the areas which are accessible by 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on minutes regarding the current traffic. Those are so-called catchment areas. The server, the map in the time of requesting such map does not exist. We are taking the position, we are taking the minutes and we are calculating such areas. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going now to show you some, some example of this paradigm. So 
let's imagine we have on the server side uh, table which uh, consists of the points there is geometry table inside this table there are points and we are producing a map using simple sql statement uh, this sql statement will produce a new content new content because we are producing a buffer around the geometry of this table and we will uh, make this radius of this buffer dependent of the b variable the b variable will be passed from the client in the request and depending of what the client will send we will produce a map and here we see how the map will change if we will pass different values of the b this was a, a simple implementation of the how what does mean dynamic content and now I will, I will, I'm going to show you how to implement very sophisticated case. Uh, maybe we, the previous example was only one volume dependent uh, content, but here we wanted to make the map dependent of different conditions calculations. And we want to change the layers, change the content of the layer. We need to calculate something and, and render the output. And, uh, I think the one of the good ways how to implement such dynamic map is to use the map script library. Map script library is a part of the map server project. I think is very good known in in open source world. And it has two mods, the CGI mod which works like normal WMS service and the map script library which could be linked into your favorite language in your favorite environment and then you have full control over what you will render what's what user will see on the map to explain so maybe the first step using map script is a little difficult to the programmers that's why i wanted to explain uh, the idea and after having the idea maybe you will see we'll have an open window for 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 your needs so map server needs a map file which is a text file and this text file we are defining what will be in the map so this map file has a structure of the object it means we have the root object which is map inside the the, the root object we have the properties of the map like format of the map which we will create the extent which we will present and the resolution in the pixels then we are defining the content of the layer in uh, in, in structure of um, uh, lists of layers we have the first layer which we configure we are defining this in this case this will be the post gis layer we define the connection string and then we are defining content content here will be the geometry column from buildings layer then we are styling this layer and this will reflect such structure of the map file which, which will reflect uh, this uh, image then second type of layer will be we will second type of layer will be raster where we define uh, the data as the URL to the geotiff. This will be the usual photo map, which you see on the picture. The next uh, layer will be the vector layer, which will be configured as the path to the shape file. And we will see in the image that we have the roads axis and the names of the roads. The last interesting type, which I wanted to show you, what is I think power also of the map script, map script is the type wms what does mean that then the last layer will be config configured as the url to the external service the external service will provide us the content and let's imagine we have a nasa server which provides us the uh, current weather forecast conditions and we are taking clouds from it and the map will be the layer will be visualized like here and if we are passing such map file to map server in the cgi mode the map server will create 
the normal the, the map like we see on the picture okay so till now we have everything is static almost static yeah we created the map from the resources which were on the uh, server but now we wanted to take control over the content and produce and use map script to 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 manipulate the map now i will show you how to use map script library after we are linking the library to our program we can use the api the methods which were provided by this by map script library the idea is that we are creating an object in any language I provided in the previous slides. And this object will be programmatic object, will reflect the structure exactly from the map file. If we are, if we created such ob object, then we can run the method draw, for example, to instruct map server map script to draw the image and send it back to the client this is the overall idea in the middle of our application we will manipulate the map uh, how we manipulate it so map script is del delivering us a lot of methods which we can run over the map object for example we can change the rotation we can change the piece of the map which we are presenting we can insert remove layers from it we can change the output format change the size the resolution or or zoom to a particular point there are a lot of methods there, those are a small piece of example but there are a lot if you see in the documentation we can we, we, we have a lot of possibilities to manipulate the map itself we can also manipulate the layers and its content. We can create new layers using the constructors. And then, for example, if we have um, SQL layer, we have control about how the SQL query string will look like. We can change the definition of what will be produced in the database as a source of this layer. We can change also or manipulate the um, the connection strings for example we can change the databases the, the data sources regarding other of on regarding other parameters we can change for example the scale denominator when such layer is visible we can change the opacity to make other layers visible and even we can manipulate for example add a feature and manipulate the content of the map a content of, of such layer uh, we, we can a lot of methods and um, methods which map script provides which allows us to manipulate what the user will see on the map let's see a small example how the map script could be used uh, i will show you a piece of code and explain how we can use the methods to um, to manipulate to have control over the map Let's imagine we have a fire event and the and uh, the 911 service received the fire event in the mission of a new 40 in San Diego. We are starting using the map server by map script by uh, creating a new map object and we start manipulate over it. So this map object reflects this image then we want to know where is mission avenue 40 we are using the external geo geocoding provider and we are geocoding the address to know where is fire point if we have a fire point then we create a new layer we are adding this fire point as a feature to this layer and we let map script to render this point as the red marker so we see on the map Let's read this code as the pseudocode, only to have the overall idea what is the map script. This will for sure not work. This is only to explain it, okay? Then we want to know which building is um, burning, which building is involving. So we want to know what building is it and how many, uh, how many floors it has, how, how many elevators and so on. Then we are creating a new building layer we are adding a new we are adding a new layer and 
changing the data of this layer as the SQL query. Select the building which where the point is inside the geometry. And we instruct MapScript to color it in the red color and we render this layer on the image. Then we want, for example, to know which buildings should be evacuated because they are threatened to be burned as well. And we have very specialized condition because we need to evacuate the more buildings, the stronger wind is blowing, the, the, the higher speed the, the wind has. So we are accessing the weather forecast provider to get a wind from the city and to interpolate the current wind from the fire point. Then we are calculating, taking the speed and calculating the buffer which we need to take, the radius which we need to take to create a buffer around the building. In the next step, we are creating a geometry which will be actually the buffer around the building. And then we will be able to take this geometry and create a new layer and select those layers which intersect this buffer. Uh, if we uh, instruct MapScript to render it, to color it in the yellow, we see following structure, following buildings to be evacuated. Then we wanted the firefighters, we want to know where are the hydrants and the current, the fresh information about the position of hydrants is stored inside the external service. The city infrastructure of San Diego provides a WMS service where we can take the hydrants from. And we are adding a new layer dynamically on the fly and we are presenting the hydrants in, as a layer in the map. The last example is this red line here. What, what it could be? This will be the road, the fastest road to access from the fire station to the fire point. We are creating a road geometry, creating new layer and adding this route as a feature to new created layer. In the end, we are rendering an image and sending to particular services. So um, if you are looking for a solution to create a map server or map service, which content will be produced on the fly, you need to manipulate the content somehow, and you are looking for a solution for it, I think the map script would be good option um, to you. I found several times that such condition is, is uh, very frequently um, such such requirements frequently occurs in the uh, teams in the development teams and they are looking for something uh, if when they are starting to use map script they are frustrated because they could not configure some parameter on the, don't know what is the idea behind it and and so on so i hope that this presentation gave you an overview and the concept of map script library and I think you have imagination how to use it. Thank you very much. There is a time for questions and answers. Um, very, very nice job, Bartek. Um, as someone who hasn't coded in a really long time, I appreciated how you sort of mix the real code and the um, pseudo code to show the, the, the logic behind it, a, a very clear presentation. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I'm uh, getting some some love on the application. Uh, applause, uh, well deserved. Um, I'm going to hop over to questions. I didn't see any earlier. Um, if anyone has any questions for uh, Bartek, uh, please um, add them in the um, application question area, and I'll pass them on. Um, We'll wait about two minutes, and and then we'll uh, be moving on to our to our next uh, presentation. Um, there, there's been a, a couple of requests. Um, uh, 
if you if you have um, a link to your slides, if you can put them in in the chat of the um, of the presentation. Um, um, you can join your th this. You know, if you open the um, the uh, application that lets you. Uh, view presentations, you can go to our room and there'll be a chat there. And as appropriate, you can um, put put your link into that. Okay. And um, people can, can, can grab it. Okay. And that's the, that's the only question I see uh, right now. So we'll wait uh, one more minute. Where is the chat room? Um, it's it's just in the side it's in the sidebar um, of the. Let's see. Um, okay, I think this is in the link in the presentation in the phosphor G website. I don't know what's going to happen here. I'll, I'll try and share my screen. That's showing. Yeah. So yeah, if you go from here okay. into the Puerto Iguazu room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and just mute mute that. Yeah. 